Welcome to DDI Vantage, and more specifically, the DDI Vantage Early Intervention Program. We are happy to have you. We hope that you are enjoying your training with us and time learning about your new job. Today I'm going to present on our DDI Vantage Early Intervention Program. DDI Vantage Early Intervention Program's lead agency is the Baby Watch Early Intervention Program, or BWEIP. Baby Watch is under the Utah Department of Health and Human Services. This presentation is split into three different sections. The history of DDI Vantage, a DDI Vantage agency overview, a detailed look at early intervention, and the Baby Watch Early Intervention Program. We're gonna start with DDI Vantage's history. DD Advantage was founded in 1971. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. DD Advantage opened its doors in 1971 by a group of parents and professionals who recognized that infants and toddlers with disabilities required and deserved specialized services that were not available in Utah. This group organized and registered as a nonprofit, a 501c3. With a small grant, Athleen Godfrey, a nurse, and Garth Myers, a doctor, organized a small program that provided early health and education intervention to children under three years of age. The number of children served by DDI in the first couple of years is unclear, but in 1973, we do know that we served 55 children. In the beginning, DDI Vantage was housed in a small donated area below Primary Children's Hospital now Primary Children's Medical Center. Soon after, DDI Vantage received funding from the Division of Family Services to provide not only health and development services for children under three years, but also preschool services for children between three and five years of age. DDI Vantage operated preschool programs for children with disabilities for years before the public school system was charged with those responsibilities. In 1988, the birth to three component of the program, Early Intervention, was brought under the administration of the Utah Department of Health Baby Watch Early Intervention Program, BWEIP, and the Utah State Office of Education became the lead agency for the three to five preschool component. In that same year, DDI Vantage entered into a contract with Baby Watch to provide early intervention services to all children in Salt Lake County, which is Salt Lake School District, Murray School District and Granite School District under the age of three years, except for Jordan School District, which developed its own EI program. For a time, DDI also provided EI services in the Park City area of Wasatch County. DDI was also given the responsibility to provide EI services in Tooele County, which we still provide today. Also in 1988, DDI Vantage entered into a contract with the Division of Services for People with Disabilities, DSPD, to provide supported employment services to adults with disabilities, and with the Department of Vocational Rehab to provide supported job-based training to adults with disabilities. Since 1988, the provision of adult services has grown beyond supported employment and supported job-based training to include supported living, personal budget assistance, respite care, chore services, life skills services, and family support. In 1997, Duchesne School District opted out of its contract for Baby Watch to provide EI services in Duchesne County, and Baby Watch invited DDI Vantage to assume the contract. The services in Duchesne County were initially supervised remotely from Salt Lake City, but local facilities and leadership were in place by 2004. In 2003, DDI Vantage wrote and submitted a grant application for 60 slots with the Office of Head Start. The grant was awarded and the DDI Vantage Early Head Start EHS program began services in January 2004. In 2006, DDI Vantage purchased and renovated a building located in Taylorsville to be used by the EHS program. In 2009, an expansion grant grew the enrollment slots to 148, and additional facilities were opened in Salt Lake City and Tooele to accommodate the expansion of staff and services. In 2014, DDI Vantage wrote a grant for Early Head Start child care slots. This grant was awarded in January of 2015. This allowed us to create partnerships with six centers and funded 66 slots, although many more children within the child care classrooms benefit from this grant. DDI Vantage Agency Overview. In this section, I'm going to talk about the structure of our agency and how we are organized in terms of supervision across the programs and administration. This is our administration organization chart. 
start. As you can see, we have our executive director. Under our executive director, we have our five program coordinators. We have a business coordinator, a human resources coordinator, our adult and youth services coordinator who runs our adult and youth services program, our early head start program coordinator, and our early head start program coordinator has an assistant program coordinator. And then we have our early intervention program coordinator with an assistant program coordinator. In early intervention, we have four sites. We have an east site, a west site, a Tooele County site, and a Duchesne County site. The east site and the west site both have assistant site facilitators. The Tooele site and the Duchesne site only have site facilitators because they are smaller sites, so they do not also have an assistant site facilitator. The Early Head Start organization chart, they have four sites, and so they have four site facilitators. They have the Mill Creek Home Base Site Facilitator, the Mill Creek Child Care Site Facilitator, although they do share a site now, the Taylorsville Site Facilitator, and the Tula Site Facilitator. The final section we are going to go over is DDI Vantage Early Intervention and the Baby Watch Early Intervention Program. The importance of early intervention. Windows for learning begin at birth. Birth to three marks the time when children's neural circuitry is most flexible and receptive to their earliest interactions and environments. Early intervention services minimizes the disability in the life of a child and enhances the family's capacity to meet their child's special needs. So that is why it is so important that we start services as soon as we see a delay in the child's developmental milestones. A recent study showed that every dollar invested in birth to three services results in a $7.30 return on that dollar. These benefits are recouped by reducing school-aged special education enrollment, reducing the frequency of emergency room visits, and better education and economic outcomes in children's lives later on. Baby Watch Early Intervention Program. Baby Watch Early Intervention Program is the lead agency for Utah's early intervention family-centered programs that serve children from birth to age three who have disabilities and or who are developmentally delayed. Early intervention is a federal and state mandated program. Program. This means that you can go anywhere in the United States and you can go to your local school district and ask for early intervention services. And they will be able to provide you a name and a number for a program that will provide birth to three services. It may not look the same from state to state, the funding may be different, but you can always get early intervention services no matter where you are in the United States. Early intervention services are provided in the child's natural environment, including the home and community settings. It is important to note that the natural environment can be at the daycare, it can be at Early Head Start facility, it could be at a center, meaning any kind of Montessori school, it could be at grandma's house, it could be at the babysitter's house, it can be at any natural environment where the child spends the majority of his or her time. That is what a natural environment is. Baby Watch helps Utah early intervention programs by taking the Office of Special Education or OSEP for short, Part C recommendations and interprets these policies according to what Baby Watch finds important for Utah EI programs to incorporate into their programs. The website for Baby Watch Early Intervention Program is www.babywatch.utah.gov. Check their website for statewide EI programs, Baby Watch policy, contacts, and more. Become familiar with this website and know it and learn from it. Here, I've listed on the next three slides the early intervention programs throughout Utah. There are 15 of them. They are mostly divided up according to areas in the state or regions, and they are non-competitive. So what that means is we do not compete for children. So we are not going to cross borders. So if a child lives in Jordan School District, but wants services in, in our area, that parent will call and ask for permission to come and get services from us and in turn, I will call that coordinator for Jordan and say, is it okay if we provide services for this child till they're three? And then we'll transition that child back to the school district at three. All of the coordinators for early intervention programs, all 15 of us, have a good working relationship. So we tend to move kids back and forth according to the parents' wishes and try to make that work. Usually what happens is in, in Salt Lake Valley, parents are commuting and they do have kids 
kids in daycare in Salt Lake City. So DDI does take a bulk of the kids who are commuting down from Logan or commuting down from Kaysville or commuting up from Provo County. And so we provide services a lot for those kids who spend their daytime hours here in Salt Lake City while their parents go to work. And then they go home with mom and dad at the end of the day and sleep at home. So we do ask permission to see kids quite a bit. I'm calling other programs and asking if that's okay. And luckily the other programs, the other coordinators are usually okay with them. Yeah, we do not try to vet other kids, parents, and other places in the state. We are not competitive like that. So as you will learn, as being in early intervention, we are not made of money. So we have five funding sources. We get money from the federal government, from OSEP, which is the Office of Special Education. It's usually the same amount every year, barely ever changes. We get money from the state government, the Utah Department of Health general funds, which I've bolded because we are. I'm going to come back to that. We get money from Medicaid and CHIP. We get a set amount of money from Medicaid and a set amount of money from CHIP for each child. This could change. I'm not gonna go into detail on this for this presentation because it's complicated and unfortunately I think it's gonna change in the near future. So not getting into it. And then we have family fees. Family fees are those parents that do not have Medicaid, do not have CHIP and have private insurance because we do not take private insurance at this time. So those families who have private insurance, they pay out of pocket and they pay by sliding scale. The sliding scale is fairly reasonable. It's determined by the legislature based on the number of people in your family and how much you make. So if you have four people in your family and you make like $100,000 a year, you use the scale, the sliding scale, and it would be like maybe $50 a month. The cool thing though is with that $50 a month, you could be getting two PT visits, two OT visits, and say two visits from a special educator. So six visits a month, and you're only paying one fee of $50 a month. You don't pay $50 per visit for everybody that comes into your home. So that's a deal. If you have any questions, we can talk more about that as when you come and meet with me. But again, that might be changing, coming down from the federal government due to some legislation that's passing. So all this changes with time, but this is how it's been for a really, really long time. We'll see what happens. And then the last one is local donations and in-kind support. We really don't get a lot of donations. We wish we did. We try, but we don't. And in-kind support, we don't have a lot of in-kind support. So I do want to go back to the state government and tell you how that works in the Utah Department of Health General Funds. So let's go back to that really quick. So as I said, we rely mostly on getting money from our state government. And this is how it works. I'm going to explain it here and you will hear about it every legislative session in January when it comes up and it's confusing but right here is going to kind of be your foundation for that learning so if baby watch sees fit with their financial advisors every year they will apply for a building block for funding to the GOMB which stands for the governor's office of management and budget before the upcoming legislative session for that year I believe it's like in September when they have to decide if they're going to apply for a, a building block if it is approved by the governor the building block will go before the the Social Services Subappropriations Legislative Committee during the legislative session of that year, which is always January through March. It is the EI programs, our DDI Vantage and all the 15 EI programs in the state. It's our responsibility to get the word out to all the constituents of the senators and their representatives that sit on those subcommittees to vote for the funding for the building block for the EI and the money that we need to run our programs. So this means means that we, EI, ask the families and our employees and our programs to call, email, and even come up to the Capitol during January through March to speak to the committee on our behalf so we can try to get this money. It's a really busy time and it can be heartbreaking also. As I said, you will learn more about the process as you work for us and how it works. Be ready for that and how to get your hands dirty with legislative funding and asking for money from representatives and learning about the process in Utah and who represents you and who represents the kids that we see. 
What do early intervention services include? A full assessment of a child's current health and developmental status, service coordination among providers, programs, and agencies, strategies to build on families' concerns and priorities and resources. This is the time that we are trying to put the advocacy and knowledge into the family's hands so that they can be able to think in terms of what is important for their family and their child on a day-to-day -day basis and communicate that. Developmental services such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech language therapy, nursing, child developmental, and special education services. All developmental services are based on an individual child's needs. When we work with a child, we do not go into an evaluation or a child's home with an idea that all children are the same or a foundation that we go off of a template. We go in with a blank slate and we go in looking at the child and the family based on their needs and we build from there. So what we come out with is very different depending on each individual child and family. Early intervention services are provided through a coordinated effort of parents, community agencies, and a variety of professionals. Some more data. The percentage of Utah infants and toddlers with an IFSP has increased since 2018 in both the birth to one and birth to three age ranges. Birth to one has gone from, in 2018, 1% to 2020, 1.1%. In the birth to three range, in 2018, 2.9% to 2020, 3.2%. This is an area that we always are trying to increase with our child find because we know Utah has a large number of children and we should be able to do a better job with child find throughout the state. And we still are low in terms of numbers of children in our EI programs and we just don't know where these kids are. For the last slide, I wanted to show you the four early intervention sites with their addresses. We have the east site, the west site, Twila County site, and Duchesne County site. And then at the bottom is listed the areas we serve, birth to three. And I put it in terms of school districts, Salt Lake School District, Murray School District, Granite School District, and then Twila County School District, and Duchesne County School District. So that's easier for me to remember, and hopefully it'll be just as easy for you to remember. So thank you for working for us. We hope that you are enjoying it and that you are learning a lot. And please come to us with any questions you have or anything we can help you with.